What is going on? So today we are going to be diving into a free indicator on TradingView that has the ability to pull back the curtain and see what is happening under the surface. Now, typically we look at charts and we look at candlesticks, we look at patterns, all these great things, and they give us clues as to what may come next. But this volume-based indicator may be able to give you the data that you need to make your next move before it even begins. That's what we got to talk about here in today's video. But before we dive in, I want to tell you about our incredible sponsor, Kalshi. Kalshi is the first fully regulated financial exchange that allows you to trade a new type of asset class, event contracts. With event contracts, you can trade directly on a variety of economic and financial factors, including what inflation will be, how federal interest rates will change, whether the debt ceiling will be raised, or if TikTok will be banned. Kalshi has hundreds of contracts, including more traditional assets like contracts on the S&P, NASDAQ, as well as Forex markets. They have zero data expirations, daily, weekly, monthly, and even yearly contracts. Kalshi's event contracts can help you protect your portfolio by hedging against specific risks or allow you to profit from being right about where the world is heading in targeted ways. Embrace the future of trading by signing up for Kalshi and using the link below or visit kalshi.com slash TC. That is kalshi.com slash TC to claim your $15 credit now. Again, kalshi.com slash TC to get your $15 credit now. All right, awesome. So now we've switched over to looking at QQQ. It is the ETF that really models a lot of tech stocks in the market. And what we're gonna do now is we're going to walk you through what this indicator is, where you can find it, and then of course, how to use it. So make sure you stick around for a few minutes. This will not take too, too long. We do wanna make sure you understand some of the use cases and some of the really good examples that we've seen over the past couple of months with this indicator. Okay, so we are using TradingView. And if you wanna follow along, right under our link to Kalshi, there'll be a link to TradingView if you want to uh, sign up and follow along. So this indicator will be seen, you can find a similar indicator or this indicator on other platforms, but there may be slight differences in terms of where you find it and all that stuff. So just take that into consideration. But first things first, you can do that for free on TradingView up on the indicators tab. So you need to make sure you've got a stock of choice. It could be a stock, it could be an ETF, doesn't really matter. It could be any asset class really that allows you to look at volume. So we've got volume on the bottom of our screen. We need to have volume involved because this is a volume based indicator. So at the top of our screen, I'm going to go over to where it says indicators, and it's not going to be a very difficult, or you're not going to have a very good difficult time finding this indicator. It's actually the second indicator on this list. It's the accumulation and distribution indicator. Okay. I'm going to start that just so I have it on my favorites if I need to go back to it, but that's what I'm going to select. Now, when I select the indicator, it's going to come up on the bottom of our screen. I'll explain. We'll go over that. Don't jump the gun. I just do want to walk through for a second, a second what this indicator is all about. What this indicator is trying to do is it's going to try to measure the underlying supply and demand of a stock, an ETF, a market, whatever you're looking at. Okay. And we're trying to see if people are buying and accumulating or if they're selling and that would be more your distribution. And so this indicator does that by plotting money flow volume. And ADL is what this indicator kind of stands for. Um, so if I say ADL, I'm referring to the indicator here, the accumulation distribution indicator, ADL, okay? Now, what we're looking for is how we can gauge the ADL versus price action. And there's really like three things that we're gonna pay attention to. Here's first the calculation, but in terms of the three things, we're looking for confirmations or we're looking for divergences. And then I do wanna to touch on the downsides as well. So stick around and we'll, we'll cover that as well so you understand what's going on. But really in finding the money flow multiplier and finding the money flow volume, now we can calculate the ADL. And then from there, we are now gonna take the previous ADL number we get and then add the current money flow volume to that. And so what we're gonna base this off of is the relative strength weakness. And that's what it's all about, okay? And so I'm gonna get out of this for a second and now my chart's pulled up. So we got a full screen chart here on TradingView. I can adjust you know, how high I want this to be, whatever I wanna do. So I'm gonna make it a little bit larger for the sake of this video. 
Top of our screen, we've got the chart of QQQ going back now a little over a year, right? So this thing, about almost two years now going back is what we're looking at on QQQ. So what we want to see is when the indicator is moving the same way as our stock price, when it's not, and then we want to see if we can dial in some relative strength or weakness off of that. So what do I mean by that? Well, on the grand scheme, what do we see? Well, as of late, past few months, we're seeing an uptrend. There was a nice little downtrend inside of that uptrend for about a few weeks or a month or so, but we have an overall uptrend. And what do we notice? Nice push, strong continuation, right? We have this pattern or what we have on the ADL indicator on the bottom of our screen is we have a confirmation being built in, right? We are moving in the same direction. Now, what we want to look for is when we're no longer doing that. And it's not as easy. It's not as like blatantly obvious as you know you may think. But if you can zoom in a little bit, you can start to notice some of these small variations and some of these small divergences that could be huge clues to the next move that we're going to see. What do I mean by that? So let's go back in time and show you some examples of this. One example I want to highlight is perfectly clear. It's right in here. And we're looking at the daily chart. Doesn't matter the time frame. You can look at multiple time frames. And while I'm talking about this, I'm on the topic, I may as well show you guys that we are not making many adjustments at all. So if I pull up my indicator down here, drop hit the drop down menu, it's the accumulation distribution right here. Go to settings. We are using chart. Wait for time frames to close is slightly, we're on the default settings. Okay. We're not going to, it's just not a very complicated indicator. There's not a lot of customizations that you need to do. Um, I might make this a little bit larger, maybe make the, the lines a bit larger. So it's easier to see, you know, that's the only thing I'm going to do, or it can change the colors, all that good stuff. Okay. So it's all about pretty much the default settings. But what I'm showing you now is a period where the ADL makes an interesting or shows an interesting divergence compared to QQQ. What do I mean by that? ADL comes down. What I would recommend doing, just like you do technical analysis, is mark relative highs and lows, okay? And so the ADL comes down and we have a relative low. So I marked that right there. This relative low occurs on this move to the downside, okay? Now we bounced, cool, bounced up and then sold back off. We actually end up going lower on QQQ. So we actually went lower than this low a few weeks later, okay, on QQQ. But what do we see? We actually notice that despite making a lower low in terms of price action, our accumulation distribution indicator, the ADL, makes a higher low. Not by much, but it makes a higher low here. And what that tells us is that we may have a divergence, which means there's more accumulation going on, which could signal more strength and a potential move to the upside, which we then saw. And that was one of the larger bounces in the larger bear market rallies in that bear market period. So we ended up getting a move from low to high. Now, no one's going to catch the absolute bottom and top, but this indicator can give you a piece or get you at least looking and allow you to capitalize on a piece of that move with a higher probability. And that's what it's all about. But that move ended up being about 24% from low to high, which is pretty cool. That's pretty big in a span of about two months, okay? Just by noticing a divergence and noticing some net accumulation going on despite the market going lower, right? And you would think, oh my gosh, people are selling more, we're getting more pressure. But under the surface, that actually wasn't really the case here on QQQ, okay? Now, as of late, in terms of that continuation trend, what you're noticing is just these steady higher lows and steady higher highs. And that's what we're getting right now on QQQ to the upside. The one thing that I'm starting to look at now, and this may be invalidated in a couple of days, but we can start to kind of get a gauge, but check this out. So we recently hit a high on our ADL right here. Okay. And that just came recently as we popped up to these relative highs. But what just happened today? As I'm filming this video, which is actually a perfect example, and it's, I'm glad it happened right now while we're filming the video, we technically just made a higher high. Now, we'll see if that continues into the coming days. There's some financial news coming out 
when I'm filming this video. So things are kind of volatile or they could be volatile going forward. But we're looking at this from a bigger picture approach, more of like a swing trading strategy right now. This could be utilized on the five minute charts, the one hour charts, it doesn't really matter, but we're just kind of zooming out to show you kind of how this works in terms of maybe swing trading and trying to predict where the market may move, where a stock may move, where an index may move next, right? And so if we make this higher high right here, but we end up netting a lower high, not by much, but netting a lower high on the ADL, that's telling us we might have some more distribution here. And this may be a signal that we are about to roll over and see a pullback in the market. And that could provide an opportunity, right? Whether that is maybe you're more hesitant on buying right now, or you're looking to hedge, or you're even looking to play the downside with a stop loss. Like th these are opportunities that now present themselves because you're looking at the ADL and now you've got this understanding of what to look for and when to look for these dive or where you may see these divergences. And sometimes they'll be more blatantly obvious than others, but there's something, these are really cool to be adding to your trading or investing arsenal. And I'd highly recommend it. Now, I do want to mention one area that this indicator may not do very well, and you may want to fill in some of these gaps by going to maybe a weekly chart or by ch tuning into different time frames to avoid some of these gaps on your charts. But when we, we do have gaps, and that can happen on daily charts and weekly charts as you zoom out, as you could have earnings reports, you can have weekend news that comes out and the markets can open or substantially higher or lower, you get these gaps on your charts. And the money flow multiplier, which is a major part in this indicator, does not take into account that change in price range between those periods, okay? So keep that in mind. It might throw off the indicator when there are gaps. And so we want to make sure you're aware of that. Don't just think that, oh my gosh, this is insane. But if there was a recent gap up or down or there's a lot of action like that, that may not make this indicator as reliable and so you may want to shift it down to a time frame where there aren't any gaps. And that could be done maybe with using the one hour charts or even on shorter time frames. It could be more useful. There you guys have it. Let us know your thoughts on the ADL in the comment section down below. And if you're going to be adding this to your trading and investing arsenals. Again, thanks to Kalshi for sponsoring the video. Links to Kalshi will be linked in the video description box below. Any questions? Comment section is open. We hope to see you in a future video. Have a great rest of your day.